Singapore is an island of the uh, southernmost tip of the Malayan Peninsula. But if you looked it up on an atlas or if you looked it up on a map, you probably wouldn't find it. Uh, it's usually described as a little red dot. It's like a little jewel because it's so small, it's so compact, and yet there's so much stuff going on here all the time. Singapore is a really unique place in the world, I think. It's a lot different than most places in Asia. There's always constant uh, uh, change in terms of the architecture, the skyline, and all. so I think nothing stays constant in this city. It's the kind of response that I get, really clean place, really green, really modern, connected. It's a lot of indoor air conditioning going on all around the city uh, due to hot weather. You're almost not in a foreign country if you're not from there, obviously, it's it's like you're going to a place that has all the amenities that you're used to. It's got buildings and streets and people and lots of shops and lots of stuff to do. Shopping malls. Shopping malls, office towers. Skyscrapers. Skyscrapers. Why not? Singapore's big on shipping. There's a lot, to, a lot of ships that come in and out, unload their cargo. That's how the place gets started, right? And that's how they earn the money, right? The port. The port. Yeah. That's where it all happens, is the port. Danger, danger, you got me going covered. Baby, our love keeps getting stranger, stranger. Take over me, it's not a test. This is an emergency. Um, a lot of people see it as a business cent uh, center. It's easy to set up companies. Uh, it's easy to actually get access to the rest of uh, Southeast Asia. One of the most recognizable things about Singapore is actually financial stability. When people come in here and invest large amounts of money, uh, and I think they feel safe for it because Singapore usually doesn't get affected by, by financial crises around the world, like the States or Europe. You know, so people come in in here putting their money in and uh, it's, it's stable. And Singapore is all about you know, non-stop construction all the time. And Singapore ultimately is about people. Lots and lots and lots of people. This song, this song is called Wolves.
seems like it's a melting pot of a lot of different places um, as far as Asia goes. It's obviously um, primarily English speaking, which stands out. I think Singapore is basically a big mix of uh, everything. You know, there's a there's a word uh, in local language. Well, it's called rojak, right? Rojak. So that's that's what it is. You got you got a mix of uh, different nationalities. You got a mix of different races, and everyone's kind of coexisting together. So if you walk around, you'd see people from Europe, from America, from different parts of Asia, all here, and um, it's fantastic because um, we see different um, uh, collaborations happening all across the different industries. For people around the world, uh, when they think about Singapore. Um, it's usually one or two things, but the main thing they're going to think about is Michael Fay, right? Uh, Michael Fay and, you know, the fact that he was caned for vandalizing uh, a couple of cars. Actually, what Singapore is really famous for is our fines, like our fining system. Yeah. When you say you're from Singapore, like, oh, you get fined for everything. No chewing gum in Singapore, you get fined. But, but people don't see it as a bad thing, they see it like it's a funny thing. Yeah, they're like, wow, what like, kind I of want place, to get fined. Do, What's what going place on? do you live in? <laughs> And I guess the other thing that it's known for is uh, the food, which is delicious. Can't knock the food in Singapore. The food is always good. I think uh, a lot of people, when they leave the country especially, whether you're a local or a foreigner that's been living here for a long time, you always miss the food the most and you always come back for it, right? Yeah, for sure. If I told you all the memories that I have failed to lose Would you close your eyes and bow your head and think of your subtle views? Would you throw me off the edge into the deep? Would you throw me off the edge into the deep? And the anchor shows me grace shows his face at every minor call And though these withered hands may have the wrong idea The anchor will bleed to you The anchor will bleed to you If I told you all the tragedies the child who sought to see Would you tell the world about your deeds And fall to the swollen sea Would you leave me in the dark here to stay Would you leave me in the dark here to stay And the anchor shows no grace To anyone who falls Anchor shows his face at every minor call And though these withered hands may have the wrong idea The anchor will bleed to clear The anchor will bleed to clear The anchor will bleed to Thank you. Most of the tourists who come, I believe they are more for the sightseeing. Uh, surprisingly, is, shopping is one of the big thing on their top of their mind. Whereas culture, music is not so much publicized. I don't think people come here for music because Singapore is not known as a music destination. Right, uh, it's mostly as a jumping off point for other parts of Asia. There's some sightseeing and stuff like that. But at the same time, I think if, if a tourist came in and, uh, and looked around a bit, they'd be pleasantly surprised with what they'd find in terms of you know, music that's going on here, that's being done on the ground. The best way to describe um, the, the local original music scene right now is that um, it's a very underground movement. Right, meaning that um, it's happening, you have people recording albums, uh, you have people putting on, uh, making videos and you have bands performing live. 
but it's only uh, known or you know only the only people who are aware are only a select few, and it's kind of like an underground movement. Okay, so the <clears throat> the mainstream, the the bulk, the majority of Singaporeans have no idea. Yeah, hey man, I got a plan for our pain. Through my pocket, I need a dollar to make a change And grave a message on a silk screen Frame, I'll keep a brick with two yellow zigzag lines Why? Cause stopping your hustle is just a crime Who am I? I'm the Lion City boy Hi, homegrown original, I keep it simple Wash your eyes, cause I offer more than a catalog And of course, the reason you would draw a hater I know a cat who just brag about nothing Just a scratch off the surface, they not worth it so be careful who you're praising, amen Let's clear the smoke over the city like it's hazing I hate DJs who play my track and just fade in Death is lazy, let's make a change in the scene Reach for the skies now if you feel me Hey man, I got a plan for what pain Put my pocket, I need a dollar to make a change Change how they look at us Change all the stuff that no one is ever good enough We make them care Change all these haters Change all the stairs you can take it, you can kiss my Yeah Come on huh. Yeah Hold up, up the volume you're recording Let's talk about me, they say that I'm important The flows are foreign, improve the boring Punchline, you so borrowed like I didn't know That's why the change of this game is upon you The leader of the old and new team, I'm Kwan Yu I put the uh in your seats for your Piku Wave your hands high in the crowd so I can see you The rule of thumb is the grind, that's the gospel This pay your dues, stop sucking on the bottom No free pass magazines that that I will revive this beauty and all with that Pressing a single CD, impressing what you got Still have the time, no rewind, Mr. McFly Call him Marty Follow me, I started off like the Tari Hurry, I see this finish line, I plan the party Hey man, I got a plan for what pain To my pocket, I need a dollar to make a change Change how they look at us Change all the stuff that no one is ever good enough We make them care Change all these haters Change all the stairs You can take it, you can kiss my One of the other things I remember is before I came here 15 years ago um, I remember that there was a, uh, a fact about Singapore roads being washed with a shampoo that I was very puzzled and shocked about. I'm like, really? Do you use shampoo to wash your roads? Do they use shampoo I to wash the roads? I think it was true in some parts of the city. It, it's funny actually that, you know, when, um, uh, when I meet people overseas when I do like uh, overseas shows and things like that, the first thing they're like, oh, Singapore, immediately they think China. It's strange that that's the first thing that people think they think of, you know, they they just don't place it. They just haven't heard of it. Maybe vaguely, but you know, that's the first thing that they think of, that it's a part of another bigger country. In a small country like Singapore, there are a lot of new bands coming out, a lot. And it's because Singapore has not pigeonholed itself to one genre of music. Because if it did, the hope's gone. You know, if it, it tried to do S-pop or S-rock. There is no such thing as S-pop or S-rock. It's, it's, it's music. Singapore music scene may be described as multicultural, covering different ethnic traditions and languages, including different genres and forms. You know, we've got rock, we've got pop, we've got soul, we've got R&B, we've got hip-hop, we've got everything. Um, and that's what's making Singapore such a melting pot. I see that more you know, Singapore artists are actually taking the time out to kind of carve, the, carve an, an identity almost. And what that means is that they're really taking the time to create great original music. They're not modeling anybody. They're not trying to be like someone else, another city, another artist. They're just kind of, they're there and it's a creative environment and they're trying to, to they're just doing what they love.
happen if you want me to So I've been very blessed to be, you know, a part of the music industry in this day and time because there's there's just so much fresh original Singapore music that's coming out uh, that's being created at the present time and present moment. There's definitely a lot more bands, not yeah. just in, and they're very good. A yeah. lot of them. Well, I think the music scene is pretty good because Singapore mm -hmm. makes a solid effort at like um, acknowledging all the up and coming bands yeah. there are. Over the last few years, we see emerging talents, uh, talents such as Inch Chua, Charlie Lim, Monster Cats. Acts like um, Pleasantry, which I really like, um, they are just coming up as well. Great songwriting. Uh, and Echo is, uh, I see Cashew Cam is doing very well as well. Great uh, rock and roll songwriting as well. This band Agilis, that's very. Uh you know, they're unique. I wouldn't call them the, you know, like, poppiest band, but they, ha it's, they have, like, this unique thing about them that's very, it's almost a blend of Europe and um, United States in a way. Even though they're, it's, they're from Singapore, you know, it's, it's pretty cool and unique. It's been a long time coming for me, this band. Uh, never felt so musically satisfied with a group of friends. It's amazing how we actually found each other, um, considering we came with, from really, really different backgrounds. I think all our songs would be like a painting of all our weird brain waves together. It's, it's actually quite diverse. It's like New York or LA. New York and LA, they're, they're on the coasts and arguably the two largest, most influential you know, music cities in the world. And they're both huge hubs for other things, obviously, than entertainment and music. But I think that music is not just influenced by music. I think it's influenced by art and by fashion and by all things really by commerce and you know Singapore I think has so much potential because there's so much commerce going on and there's so many different types of people different ideas and you know it's a new fresh place that's kind of untapped so there's just an excitement I think about the uh, music seen there in general. First two quarters of the year we've seen an increase in the amount of gigs uh, in fact um, the official statistics show us that actually it's a record number of live music. And you don't even know where to go most of the time. Like, there's too many things. Last night there were like three gigs going on and, you know, we had to choose one. Where do you go? 
I went to neither of them. Ten years ago, so for example, you'd be stranded to find good events and good shows to go to. Uh, but now, actually, every given weekend, there could be like three or four or even up to six uh, events and shows that you wanted to spend your time at, but you just can't because it just, it just clashes. To this warm sky Now we're holding on For our dear lives Disconnect the safety lines Now we'll never Never return When I first started music, I think I, I could probably play drums uh, even before I stepped on the drum set and it's, it's not something to, to, to boast about, it's just that I just really like the drums. Um, three bands before I even hit my youth was, was Guns N' Roses, uh, Nirvana and Metallica for sure. I mean, people like to diss those bands now but those are the bands that, that probably influence everyone into rock nowadays. Um, just remember beating my my books and my tabletop in school with the pencils and that's how I started playing drums. The way I see it, music is, is one of the purest forms of communication you can have, right? It doesn't necessarily depend on, on words um, or, 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 what am I trying to say? It, you, it transcends uh, languages. Yes, it transcends languages. It's just about pure emotion. Music is important to me because um, it's, it's, a, it's a huge channel and avenue for me to express myself. I think that it's a language that everybody speaks in and it's something that um, it, it brings out emotions that you can't buy with money. Music has been the one thing that has been constant in my life. Um, whether I like it or not, it has been the friend and companion all this time. You know, people remember you for, the, for your music. You know, you could pass on generations after generations, but people still listen to you. I mean, I don't really listen to Mozart, but then, you know, people still <laughs> listen to him, you know. That's the power of music, you know, it's beyond anything that we can comprehend, I think. But that's, that's the beauty in it. Music is always like my other lung. It's something no one can put me down for. And it's always about the passion, never the self-esteem or marketing or, you know, anything that requires attention. I think what makes us different is that thanks to this international community we all managed to meet up and uh, there's something about us all from being from different places that gives us a bit more of a bond than other people perhaps. I think another thing that makes us different is that um, we are quite different from each other. For example, none of us even really like the same bands. Yeah. So it makes Like our influences come from everywhere. Yeah. So makes for very interesting music.
When can we really go? Turn up the volume, please. The advantage of being in Singapore is that um, you don't really have to travel very far to do a gig. I mean, uh, let's not take for granted, you know, I have friends who stay in um, Malaysia, in Jakarta, and for them to get to a gig, often traveling is not easy, you know, um, especially if you're from a smaller village. So in Singapore, traveling is really convenient. You could put up a gig and be home in 30 minutes. Or, or I know even of bands who do a few gigs a, a night, so they play at one bar and go on to the other. And that's really a huge advantage that we cannot take for granted. For example, in Australia, you have to bring <laughs> your whole set of gear with you every time you gig, right? You got to bring a drum set, you got to bring your backline, amps and whatnot. And then here you kind of go to a place and you have everything ready for you, right? And venues here have drum sets for you, they have the bass, guitar amps, they have the mics, you know, so it's kind of easier in that way. I mean, I've gigged in a places like Australia. I mean, the States, I think it's the same as well. Not every venue will have the whole backline for you. So here it's kind of easy. I think a lot of people don't realize that. You know, firstly, Singapore is kind of small. So if you're actually a good band, you'll really stand out quickly. And that gives you a lot of leverage to then tap into other markets like Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, Philippines and Australia regionally quickly. Uh, you know, and, and people will know who you are. And it, the good, the good part is, you know, being in Singapore, you've got a Singapore passport. It's not hard to travel to other countries. You know, visas are easy to obtain. Uh, infrastructure in Singapore is really, really good. The you know, internet here is, you know, lightning fast. Uh, it's not hard to, to to get into a lot of contact with people overseas and stuff. Um, so I think that that's one big benefit of being in Singapore. The advantage of being a band in Singapore right now is that. It's the start, I think. It's the start of our music scene kind of taking another level. So, really, there are no rules in a way. Yeah. It's like you you can we, make, we the, make rules. the rules. We're making we're trying to make the rules, or we're we're trying to open new doors. So, I don't know. Kind of everything everything goes right now. So that's a yeah. incentive. Everyone's saying like <laughs> it's a movement, it's a revolution.
Singapore is constantly struggling with this. Um, you know, what does it mean to be Singapore, and what does it mean to to be here? And as a result, I think um, there's not a style of music that people can really identify with. And if it's from Singapore, it probably sounds like something that you've heard anywhere else. Until we find a certain sound, I don't think Singapore has a certain sound right yet, right now. I don't think so. There's no like New York City hardcore sound, or there's no like. Uh, yeah, I know. I mean, we, we take our influences from from around the world. Yeah. To to kind of pigeonhole and say that Singapore music is just like one thing, it, it isn't. It, it isn't really. It's 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 a lot of different things put together. The, why, the reason why Singapore Singaporean artists are, are as such is because we we're a young country. We have no identity just yet. So we draw from Asian culture. We we draw from uh, Japanese rock, from Korean pop. We we recognize our roots. But at the same time, because we are a colonial a post colonial country. We have a lot of uh, Western influence from from the UK, from from America, mm. of, uh, with their pervasive media. We do get a lot of influence from the West, like a lot of the music that that we produce, a lot of the music that comes out of Singapore sounds similar to what is being produced in the West. But we somehow uh, we are able to uh, fuse uh, elements of localness into our music. We see that there's a need for for our country to develop a pool of works because we think that works actually define ourselves. I think there's a responsibility for artists here to really, with their art, to discover and to explore what is the Singaporean identity, what is Singaporean culture. Come on, hey. No money in my pocket, man, use whatever brought to me Never be a star unless I graduate astrology Don't want to wake up from dreams, so I hit snooze Born to win, mama never raised the son to lose See, I always was a rolling stone, spent my birthdays alone Nobody knows me inside, only numbers on my phone For real, I feel like I've been through hell They don't want me to succeed, I'ma do it by myself Everybody that hated to be on my bandwagon Acting like they're riding with me ever since it all Happened making sure mama never went no shops again So proud of my boy, me telling a friend Two years down, look where it all done came to About to do it for my city Still this same dude Scream till everybody done tell me they heard it If I die, I'm making history, homie, it's all I Stay, look at me now I've come so far Said I'm here to stay Take a look Look at me now, baby Everybody now, everybody now. I see the stars in the sky tonight. I see the stars in the sky tonight. The thing that makes me unique, first of all, is I'm from Singapore and I and I rap. That's that's one of the most basic things, and and I feel like the the fact that I'm from Singapore it affects the things that I talk about in my music, and that really really shows and and brings out the originality and and. And how unique it is. It's a movie, but I can't figure out my script. The grinding is a crime of success. Call me my bird and see. Nothing is fair, but even if I was going with her, gotta guess my food for thought. Too bitter, they tell me I'm number one, second to none. Breathe life to the game, even if I lose a lot. I'd say our goals. Uh, mainly just to go as far as we possibly can. Yeah, pretty much. Like, yeah, aside wherever from that, wherever that is. <laughs> <laughs> just like play music as much as we can, like to as many people as we can. Yeah. It's, that is aside from just having fun with it, of course. Yeah, yeah. I want to just see how much, how far we can get. Which Successful is, as we can get. Yeah. Oh, famous yeah. as we can get, rich as we can get. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I don't know of a Singapore band that's really made it big, on a global scale. Or that's known like, wow, those are the guys from Singapore, right? Um, so that that's challenging. If you're going to be based here, I think you really need to be thinking about the outside world. You cannot have Singapore be uh, your market. There's a great potential for us to roll out um, new sound, new way of doing music. There's great potential. And we hope our music will be able to not just well received in Singapore, but reach out beyond the shores of Singapore and getting out there you know, into the global music community. Strangely, I think I echo the government sentiments when they always say that you, know, uh, you start off locally, 
but you got to think global got got to be your uh, finance strategy. I think what we need and what the scene needs is one breakthrough artist that can really make it. No, I I wouldn't want to say big, but uh, be known locally on 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 you know your average person level. You know, it only takes one, and once one artist gets a critical acclaim and gets recognition and really takes off they're only going to bring everyone else up with them because people are going to recognize and see that that there's something cool going on and people want to be a part of that Days without you can be hard for Sometimes things will go astray But now you're gone I keep holding on to Years you work your life was simple and dead Since you've been gone I've been fighting these tears Oh, oh girl, girl I miss you Since you've been gone In the next two to three to five years, is there's a really very critical point now. We're at really a critical point now for the local music scene. Um, there are many kind of like possibilities, opportunities for the local music scene to be as exciting, as well known as let's say the the, the punk scene in the New York, you know, the CBGBs of that time or even the, 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 the Seattle scene of the early 90s. If not all the pieces come together, then all these years of people, you know, putting so much time and effort and sacrificing a lot of things in their own personal lives to, to see, you know, music in Singapore develop, then, you know, it's, it, I, I, I don't know, man. It would, it would become like a, a black hole. <laughs> I think the biggest challenge to be an artist in Singapore is to overcome the the stereo um, the stereotype of local musicians. It's like because we were brought up in a system where everybody is telling us like you know being a local artist or being a local musician or or have to have anything to do with local arts. You know you you you're not gonna have a future in it. You're you're gonna, you're not gonna be cool. Basically, that, that's about it. Like you know um, we were brought up in a system where teachers taught you to um, go to a proper school get your get your education right i mean that's important but i mean uh, i think that they should pay attention to the arts too yeah you know people in general do not appreciate the art they don't think it's any use there's no economic value to it so um to such an extent that in the 80s actually um, singapore was considered a cultural desert here in singapore you hear all the you know horrendous stories and the woe is me stories of what it was like and you know that's not not nice to hear because it's actually quite sad that it was that way but um, as I say that was then and this is now if we kept looking back then we won't go forward and I think it's a question of saying now what have we got. We also noticed that um, among some Singaporean there's this um, 
idea or perception that you know artists has to go overseas, gain some recognition before they're accepted in in our country. Uh, Singaporeans don't have the same uh, same level of appreciation of the arts there than you know people that stay in France or the UK or, or the US, right? And that's not really their fault. Uh, I mean, that's really due to up upbringing and, and and you know cultural background. The other challenges from a business perspective is that the market here is really, really small. Um, that there is not really a music buying public. Local music is stereotyped as bad music, so I, I think we should move away from um, like the whole term local music, local this, local that. We should like you know brand ourselves as Singapore, Singaporean music, you know Singaporean arts, and and we because we we really have something great to offer to the world. It's just. It's just a matter of time on, on whether people are going to recognize it. The main change um, that has to happen in order for the local music scene to grow is um, mindsets have to change. If we can only have an environment, a market or the society acknowledging this fact that the music played by the musician is a, a service, is an art, and they are willing to pay for it, then I think there is a better chance for uh, bands and musicians to continue doing what they are doing and uh, survive on it. If there's support like there has been from the top down, the bottom will start to rise up as well and you will be able to see um, more, more support of, um, of the arts in general here, which can only be a good thing, right? General public support, right? Yeah. Yep. At our level, at NAC, we will continue to work with key stakeholders so that there'll be more openness, there'll be more embracing of our local music. For Singapore to elevate its music scene, uh, I think the ecosystem and infrastructure needs to be in place to um, elevate the bands and nurture them to, and to be able to stand their ground internationally. So, you know, your radio stations, to your government agencies, to your organizations, to your labels, uh, to your managers, we, we all have to play our part, work together. We need to develop that culture of, uh, you know, getting this exciting and wonderful music to the audience that, that we have. So we need tastemakers to kind of take charge and take the lead on this. And whoever they may be out there, they need to kind of, you know, pop up and, 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 and own it because this is their space. Nine years away and we got no hope for the future
Good evening, everybody. Um, I can't tell you what an enormous pleasure it gives me to welcome you all to the first Sofa Sounds in Singapore. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of equipment here because we record it um, and film it. begin to wonder is this the end we are running round in circles but we barely reach the surface run a little slower just to counter this emotion just to breathe try to find a trace of light we're lost now so pack your bag time to leave Just don't look back I won't be waiting for you This word you said to me As I'm running I think we have to be very thankful for um, the people who have uh, started movements related to music on the web. Uh, Soft, for example. Soft is a community for musicians and also people who are interested in playing music. We provide an uh, interaction platform such as a forum uh, for people to post questions, to share ideas. And on the production side, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of people who have been doing great things, um, you know, Leonard Suse. I think Leonard Suse is the John Herbert of the 1990s and the 2000s. And the reason I say that is because not a single Singapore rock band hasn't passed through or been involved with Leonard in one form or another. The majority of artists that I've worked with have all been Singapore bands. I mean, uh, in the last 15 years, I've, I've recorded about between four to five hundred uh, albums. He himself has grown over the years in, in, in experience in, as an engineer and, a, as, and as a producer and he's basically shaped a particular sound. He wants to see you achieve, you know, success and, and he'll do whatever he can to make sure your song and your music sounds the best that it can. So he's never one to kind of sit down, sit back, He's always applying himself and contributing to all these new bands and sharing, sharing his experiences as well. When I'm producing a band, I try to capture the essence more than, you know, like using the computer to you know, manipulate the, the music. Uh, because I believe that, that music comes from them, you know, and they have to be true to themselves and, and be honest about their music. It's hard to ignore his, his influence and his contribution to, to the overall music scene. He could be working anywhere, but he chose to, you know, help all these young bands here in Singapore, you know, fulfill their dreams. Whether together, remember, it's better together. And if you believe there's life after the storm. Stick around and tell me your story, my morning glory. 
Sometimes we hurt, sometimes we bruise, but I'll always be. I'm also happy to note that there, are, there is ground up effort to grow the local scene, in particularly the, uh, the setup of SG Muso. It is a private effort, uh, people coming together to set up the company, the organisation, to governise the scene so that there's a common platform to dialogue, to exchange ideas and to drive together the, the development of the scene. It's not about pushing Singapore music, local music in your face. It's about, you know, doing great music and then people will listen. But there isn't enough advocacy in Singapore. There's, no, there's, not that, you know, there's not that much interest in the avenues of Singapore music. And you know, we've got to actually beat up on getting broadcasters, various other people to realise that you know, there is some good Singapore music here. I also hope to see more local support for our own music, either by the media, greater patronage, and also community at large. But we need to actually create better awareness with media platforms. You know, it's actually quite disheartening to know that they don't know a lot about what's going on locally. So we need to make sure they do know, because it's important for us to make sure they know. So the idea is to start developing bi-monthly or quarterly listening parties for the media platforms. Pull me out of focus, keep me in the queue. I'm the tile of a wheel to now it's in the waiting room. Embrace the silence when there's nothing left. You got no room for demons when you're self-possessed. So why am I so bitter about you, babe? I don't understand Every time you ride in the sunshine But I just sleep through it But I never wanted you to lie to yourself About happiness And all you were was changed Was I spoiled for love? If you had it not, played out the danger. You don't have to ask. But this modern moment will soon come to pass. 
what's it like being a foreigner in a foreign land when mm. it comes to being an artist? Do you find that there is a, a, a brick wall or do you find that you're accepted because you're an artist? Or, you know, again, what, what would you say your experience has been like being overseas? Has it been, you know, disheartening? Has it been fantastic? Have you been really inspired by it? It's a pretty big question. But I think like just on the surface alone, right? I think like there are stereotypes, you know, out there especially like with like Chinese, Asian guys, like, you know, we're not really meant to be singing for some reason. Yeah. But I think if you can sort of prove that wrong, you know, I think it actually works better for you, maybe. Yeah. So I think, to my knowledge, that's how it's been working so far. It's not you stopped know. you anyway, is it? No, no, no. It's at not all. stopped you. You've, no. you've just said, I'm doing this, and yeah. that's it. Mm -hmm. Charlie, what next? Uh, well, we're trying to go on tour. We even like printed the T-shirt with all the cities labeled. Not even sure if we can like go yet, but um, we're going to like we're going to Korea to play a jazz festival. We're going to Japan. Uh, we're going to Hong Kong at the end of the month. We're going to Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia. We're going to play another festival. Thank you. There's been things that, that were going on in, in schools, in secondary schools. People have been having gigs there, so I think that helps. I think more of that needs to happen because that's where your fan base is, you know. It's those 14, 16 year olds that would want to listen to the music. School Vision Tour is basically a sort of like a road show that promotes uh, Singapore musicians uh, to the students actually of Singapore. We actually go to different many uh, educational institutions in Singapore like secondary schools, polytechnics, ITEs, uh, universities and uh, JCs as well, junior colleges. This is just one of the school invasion events that's happened in the last few years that, that uh, aging youth have been running this. So in 2011, uh, we started working with uh, School Invasion Tour uh, guys, uh, Willy Tan, Said Hader, uh, and uh, the whole premise and purpose of working with them was because uh, at the time I was managing a band called Six, and with the School Invasion, we had this you know, fantastic opportunity to finally play in front of 13, 14, all the way up to like 18, 19 year old uh, kids. It's actually to promote the advocacy of uh Singapore English music actually to the students. Of course it was a bit makeshift, you know, it was on school stages, so it wasn't, you know, you didn't have the whole kind of LED and smoke machine and things like that, but I guess that's secondary to the fact that we are there and we are performing in front of, uh, you know, the youths, the, the guys and girls who would basically be buying the albums at the end of the day and, and supporting the music.
A circle torment, the battlefield cry I am The moment of pretense, the angel of light Beginning, seething, reaping, fighting SG Muso uh, started the Steve Lila White Production Week because we felt that we had the skills, the talent, and the musical acts, you know, that that were basically destined for worldwide, you know, stardom. That, that's 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 always where we come from. We believe that there's that talent there, and so all we needed was someone to guide us and guide us through the process. And at least for the first session, we felt that Steve Steve Lila White would be the person to do it. The real um, difficulty is to get radio in this country to play what is what you know what you guys are doing. Graham Perkins had met uh, Steve at Music Matters 2011 and casually asked him, "Hey, you know, would you be interested in producing a Singapore band?" And he, maybe jokingly or not, I wasn't there. But he basically said yes. Mystery spell my name or come to me. I'm very excited for all of you because I, you know, and what we have to do is to get the various ways that people listen to you, make those bigger, you know, expand the arteries of of Singapore music because um, I think you've got a scene here. The process in which we, we went about doing it was we actually sent out a call and we had about 31 bands send submissions and demos to us. Um, of those 31 bands, we, we whittled them down to 15 that would be suitable for Steve and sent that to him to make his final decision. Eventually, he picked uh, one band, the Sam Bellows, and remade their song, The Glass House. So we just completed our first day alone with Steve and it was very productive. Well, we managed to track acoustic guitar, electric guitar and bass guitar, yeah. The first note is just at the end of the vote of the yeah. 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 Okay. Just try that if there's space, if there's room. He really wanted to bring out the essence of the artist and he was very, very patient and, and uh, supportive and being able to coax it out from, from the talents. Let's do the vocals now, gang vocals now, and then we'll, we'll do start with percussion and uh, then do get into the drums and the last bits and the beats of guitar. I'll lay down yours and I'll lay down mine Tell my mother and father I'll miss them all the time And You know, things that kind of have turned the tide, uh, in, in my opinion at least, in the last few years is the fact that Music Matters came to Singapore. Uh, Music Matters, just very quickly go through what happened at Music Matters. If you're not sure what this is, this is a music conference. It's the only music conference in Asia. It's been run for seven years now. Two years in Singapore, five years in Hong Kong. It was a very interesting move for us to, to take Music Matters live, the festival, down to, to Singapore. 
Um, but recently, in the last few years, the government have invested very heavily in the entertainment sector and the media sector. Music Matters has been really beneficial to um, local bands and, and industry people because uh, A, it gives us a chance you know, to listen to the insights of top managers, top music producers. The mentor sessions, wow. I mean, I, I, sat, next to, I sat next to this guy called Bob Ezrin. And if you don't know who Bob Ezrin is, he's the producer of Pink Floyd, Alice Cooper, Nine Inch Nails. It was finally a, a, an event, a platform, a yearly platform that we could finally interact with you know, the global music industry players. You know, they would come to Singapore, discuss various topics, to discuss various sessions on uh, whether it's you know, copyright or piracy or you know, the new music developments or new digital developments. Uh, we were very impressed with Singapore's infrastructure. Uh, it's becoming very much an entertainment destination. The Western media, the Western uh, music businesses get to know what's really happening in Asia and, and how Singapore is really quite the epicenter of it all. I'd love to see just more people coming and discovering new bands and, and really understanding that Asia is a very exciting place to be right now for the entertainment business. Beats is, is the biggest music festival that happens in Singapore. It usually takes place uh, around June, July or August. It's an annual indie festival that takes place at our premier arts location called the Esplanade. Which looks like two durians. If you don't know what durian is, they are basically uh, fruits with very sharp tones. Okay, so it runs for about uh, three days over the weekend. It's by the bay, so you get um, a really nice waterway, you see boats that are going past. So a lot of uh, young kids, a lot of teenagers, a lot of youth uh, attend Bay Beats because they want to see, you know, who are the, the, the newer bands that are, are coming up.
Bay Beats is not just a Singaporean music festival. It, it is also actually a regional mu alternative music festival. I have a lot of friends who actually come down from like Malaysia, Philippines uh, to perform. And uh, to them, actually, it's an honor. It's actually a goal. Actually, it's a career highlight in, the, in their lives and in, in, in their band. It provides a platform for, for bands to actually get a, a, a jump start or a head start because, you know, it's, it's like if you play Bay Beats, right, like uh, to a lot of bands, it means they've made it, you know, or they've, they've achieved uh, success. It has been running for quite a number of years already, uh, very well attended. So they have multiple stages uh, from big ones to slightly more intimate ones uh, indoors. So the bands actually get rotated to play at the different stages. It's kind of like the, the you know, the, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. You <laughs> know, that's what Bay Beats is. You took your time You took you place your hands upon my eyes You took what was needed You used to laugh about my pride first music videos I put out was called On My Grind and was featured on World Star Hip Hop as like um, the unsigned talent of the week, the, the first like Singaporean to, to be featured there and it was, it, was a, it was a great, it was a great like experience for me because I never ever even imagined myself to be on that site. Last year we had uh, the first ever Singaporean album uh, that was nominated for Grammy Awards and I think it inspired a lot, a lot of Singaporeans to aim higher because if you had asked me this question, you know, like 10 years ago, if there would ever be a Grammy nominated album from Singapore, I'd say, you know, it's, it's, it's an almost impossible dream. There's just a lot more going on now than let's say seven, eight years ago. And that's just gonna keep on going. And eventually I think um, things are gonna happen and it's gonna be really good. I think that all the pieces are there for it to be a really flourishing music scene and I think that the the it can only grow because there's great talent and there's a lot of great places to play. There's also a lot of interest overseas in Asian music, right? Because uh, Asia is such a big market, a lot of Western bands are coming here to perform as well. So there's really a great opportunity for Asia and especially for Singapore. Uh, for the bands here to uh, make, to kind of break through not only in Asia but also in, in the Western countries. I think we are going worldwide actually. Um, I, there are a few artists that I know who are Singapore, Singaporean artists and they're being signed by American labels. Uh, and the whole world is, going, is starting to sit up and listen, hey, maybe there's like an avenue here in Singapore and yeah, uh, I think we're going worldwide, basically. Here, we are trying to bring the local music scene and industry up to the next level. Here, we are giving local music a bigger stage. Here, we are learning and growing, so let's build. Here, we are full of surprises. 
come be intrigued. Here, we are supporting local musicians through new inventive mechanisms. Here, we are growing a better music scene. Here we are putting the sum of our lives and our experiences into songs. Here, we are still doing it. Here, we are trying to make people's lives a little bit better through music. Here we are to make a change. Here, we are still rocking and we will still be rocking you know, for years to come. No matter what you know, situation is, no matter how bad things are, no matter how good things are, we will still be rocking. Take your mind, don't take your mind